What's up guys, it's me, the Dom Fanatic, long time no speak. Today I'm here with a pretty exciting video, if we're going to be honest. We've got PPL Division 1 Season 4 Norwich Skitty Draft Analysis. Now, hoping to not make this too horrendously long, because I know they normally are. Um, <laughs> I've only got 9 Pokemon to... Um, talk about spoilers um, so hopefully it's not going to be horrendously long hopefully it stays you know kind of interesting for you I guess kind of maybe um, but what you're gonna see on the screen is uh, just the Pokedex basically I'm I might I don't know yeah I'm thinking I haven't decided that I'll either be the Pokedex which I'm recording now just in case or some GFX um, that I can use so Without any further ado, uh, let's just get into what my team is um, this season. Now, you'll know what it is already if you were there watching the draft on uh, Rykwin's Twitch, uh, because we did do the draft um, uh, it before the stream, and the stream, everyone know, like knew it wasn't live drafting, because there is no way in hell. It took three or four days for the Division 1. Um, just the draft, so we couldn't do it live, unfortunately. But you know, Rife thought, you know, it'd be kind of nice to present it in this way where um, it might take a few hours, but you know, it'll be quite interesting for people to watch. So I think there's 140 picks to go through, so hopefully, you enjoyed all the in depth uh, analysis and all them guys. Um, some, some odd picks in there as well, but unfortunately, there aren't too many odd picks on my team. But we'll go over each thing as it goes along. So First round, round one, uh, my game plan, I didn't have any draft plans until about half an hour before the draft started, um, mainly because A, I didn't have time, and B, we decided to start early because people's holidays, and D1 is notorious for taking ages in their draft, because of the time zone, so we thought, right, we better um, we better try and get this going early so we can you know, get on deadlines and stuff, so that's what's happened. Um, so, round one, I, my plan was, there was one Mega Retro I wanted to use the whole way, but based on how good my Mega Latios, Florgis, and Skarmory core was last season, I was like, fuck it, I'm going to try and get that back. Round one, first pick, onesie Bayner, was he take, Mega Latios, I was like, nope, that idea's gone. Um, not sure why he picked it, because he was uh, useless with Mega Latias and TVU. Shots by that. Um, I'm not so sure what he thinks he can do differently with Mega Latios, um, but we'll find out, I guess. So, I ended up getting my Mega now. Some people probably argue that it's not a round one pick. Some people would. Um, the only reason I picked so early on was because I wasn't sure if anyone else wanted it or not. Um, there's probably a couple of things you'll see later on in the draft, which you'd be surprised went so late. and. I also prioritised this Pokemon over some of the others. But I am a huge fan of this Pokemon, both its Mega and Normal form. It's really cool. And it's a Pokemon that is just Ow. Now it has been using the PPL once, one season out of, what, two Division 2 seasons and three Division 1 seasons. Um, and it was... <laughs> I've, I've been wanting to use this guy for a very long time, and I have to find him now uh, on the Pokedex. I think what we'll do is we'll probably just have the Pokedex in the background because it's a cool little uh, shenanigan thing. Cool little shenanigan. Good job, me. So the Pokemon that I decided to draft first was uh, Mega Gallade. Now I'm hoping... There you go. It is going to let me show it. We have got Mega Gallade as our first pick uh, for this season. Now... Mega Gallade is seriously, seriously spooky. Personally, I believe he... I mean, people don't underrate him. He's just not used much. Now, his stats... 165 base attack. Ow. Uh, 95 defense. 115 special defense. And 110 speed. Special attack, you... I was going to say you don't need, you can use, because this thing does get Vacuum Wave. The only thing is his HP stat, which I think is base 65. Um, that's probably his only stat that isn't good. And I say it isn't good, but he has defences and moves that can actually make him 
bulky and offensive. And that's why I love Mega Gallade, let alone he gets fantastic coverage and powerful stab in close combat. Zen headbutt. Fuck it, focus punch if you want it. Um, he also gets coverage like Leaf Blade, Knock Off, Elemental Punches. Um, what else is that? I mean, there's probably loads of things that I'm thinking of. Poison Jab for Fairies, Shadow Sneak for Priority. Also gets fantastic utility moves like Thunder Wave. Um, maybe Taunt? I want to say Taunt, I'm not sure, don't quote me on that. Uh, also gets things like, uh, I'm pretty sure it gets Reflect and Light Screen because it's a Psychic type, most Psychic types do. I'm not looking any of this up. Um, substitute Drain Punch is a lovely combination this thing can run. Um, and because of its special bulk, you know, you can run Special Defensive with Bulk Up. If you want to go full on offense, you can just run Swords Dance. This guy is pretty damn versatile, and that is what I love about um, Mega Gallade probably the most. Other than its design, I think Gallade's design is great, and I love Mega Gallade's design more. It just looks badass. I mean, he has scythes as his arms. I mean, how can you argue with that? So, that's why I picked Mega Gallade. Shroom used him season one. Pretty sure it did quite well. I mean, the only thing that's realistically going to switch into a close combat is a bulky psychic type. Spoilers, Reuniclus didn't get drafted, Cresselia did, but I definitely have some things on my team that can deal with bulky psychics, so when bulky psychics are gone, Mega Gallade is going to have a field day. Um, just, you know, psychic normally struggle with dark types, I'm, I'm a fighting type as well, fight it, I mean... I can't really think off the top of my head what sort of matchups he's advantageous and at a disadvantage in. But I'm really, really looking forward to using Mega Gallade this season. I'm a big fan of things that are fast and can hit hard, and this guy just fits the bill. And he's one of my personal favourite Pokemon, along with the likes of Staraptor. So I, I'm really happy that I did get Mega Gallade this season, and I'm really looking forward to using it. It's definitely up there with um, some of the Pokemon I'm going to try out this season. So that was round one. Um, and poor old Liam, I think, got sniped um, pretty early on in the in the whole draft, and I don't think he had a fun time in general drafting. But I'll let you uh, find out more about that in his own video. But uh, I was tenth in the draft pick, so there was only four picks between Mega Gallade and my next pick, and I decided that I wanted to get a. I've got two Pokemon returning from last season, and I've got one returning from. Uh, a previous season. Um, so this is the first Mon coming back from last season and that is Skarmory because one, I didn't want Alex having it with Mega, uh, Mega Latios because I know how disgusting that is. Um, two, I was pretty confident someone else would want it and I know Sam said he would have wanted it and I know Alex said he wanted it. So that, the timing of picking Skarmory was amazing. Um, now, Skarmory was picked because it's mainly, well, I mean, it's such a reliable defogger, it gets Roost, um, it gets Whirlwind, it gets, I, I can't remember if I said defog or not, but it gets Spikes, Stealth Rocks, hell, it even gets Swords Dance and Autotomize, it's, it's insane, it, it's just one of them mons that is so good in sort of, you know, like your normal Smogun play. It's so good in competitive play when partnered up correctly, and I'm trying to find it on here. Where on earth is... There it is. There's Skarmory. Um, Skarmory is just the one I loved using last season. It's not... It's like... It's bulky. It, it can do enough damage. I mean, it gets Brave Bird, for God's sake. Um, it's not really set up fodder because you can Whirlwind or Roar. Um, it can go specially defensive because its physical defense is nuts anyway. It's just a great switch into a lot of things in league play. Um, so that's why I'm a big fan of this thing. I'm also a huge fan of the fact that it can't get poisoned. Um, not until Salan Dit or whatever its name is out in a Sun and Moon. But um, it, it's just a really nice switch into a lot of things. And you can run it in so many defensive ways, sort of like Leftovers, Rocky Helmet, um, Eject Button, Red Card. Um, and there's probably just loads of other wacky sets I could make up as well, but it's just such a reliable Pokemon. I really wanted it back uh, for this season because 
It worked quite well for me last season. Admittedly, it like, didn't get me many kills, but you know, the hazard setting, the phasing, the removal. I mean, last season my team wasn't weak to hazards. And having a quick look at my team this season, it's not too... I only have two things weak to stealth rocks anyway, so... It's not too bad in the terms of, you know, it's not weak to rocks. The steel typing covers that. Steel typing gives it defensive capabilities that are fantastic. Flying doesn't have many weaknesses anyway. It's, what, electric, rock, and uh, ice, of which two are taken away just because you're a steel type. Admittedly, you get more weaknesses, like fire, but... Skarmory is just a great Pokemon, I can't praise it enough, in my opinion anyway, um, and it's obviously reflected when I sniped it off about two people this season, so I'm really grateful that I managed to get this thing. So that was my second pick, so so far we've got Mega Gallade and Skarmory. So I now had to wait quite a while and I knew I wanted Flawless as my next thing. And then uh, I think it got to Shroom, and I think he was about 6th in the draft order, and he took Flawless, and I was like, Right, this this is going to be the Exodus of Fairies. This this is going to be bad because I really want a Fairy in my draft. Um, I really wanted Floor just for Wish Passing, so I'm right. Right, I want a Romantis, and I am screwed if someone else takes it. So, like a couple of turns in the draft later, after Shroom was Sam, and he picked Sylveon. And then Alex was saying, "Oh, you've just sniped me of Sylveon." So his whole wall core has been sniped. Skarmory and uh, Sylveon and Megalatios. You only got Megalatios half him. Um, and I was like, he's going to take a Romatis, he's going to take a Romatis. I can't remember what he took, but he didn't take a Romatis. And I was like, thank the Lord. Sly now takes Toga Kiss, and George takes Azumarill. And I'm like, right, there's there's a Romatis, there's Granbull, Toga Tick at a push. And I'm like, okay, I'm not going to get a Fairy. It gets to me, thankfully a Romatis is left. Groans in the chat, because I've used it before, same as Skarmory. <laughs> um... Aromatis is back from Season 2, part of that wall core that was Heatran, Mega Slowbro, and Aromatis. Oh man, that was such a fun core. Um, Aromatis and Skarmory just work well together. I mean, obviously still resists and is immune to Fairy's weaknesses. Um, Aromatis isn't immune to Skarmory's weaknesses, but can take it on pretty well because, you know, a lot of electric types and a lot of ice types are special. Obviously, there's physical ones, but, you know, Aromatisse, this is the one thing that she has over Florgis, and that is more physical bulk, um, and you get more HP as well, so you get more efficient um, wish passing, as I say, more effective. Florgis is extremely effective in wish passing, so I didn't want to say that wrong, but I'm really excited to have Aromatisse, and I've just remembered that I haven't found it on the Pokedex, so yeah, Aromatisse is just cool. As you'll see with my team, there is a potential to use Aromatisse in an offensive sense as well. That's just going to take forever. Let me just do that. There, oh, I found it. There, oh, look at that. Look at that for skill. It's even the shiny one. Um, Aromatis has obviously got the capabilities of mainly being a special defensive mod. Obviously, you can go physical. It gets Wish. Uh, it gets moves like Moonblast, obviously. Uh, I'm pretty sure it gets Thunderbolt. Um, Energy Ball. Psy Shock. Uh, it doesn't get Ice Beam, I don't think. Does it? I think it gets Thunder Wave. I haven't done much research into their movesets before this video, guys, so give me some slack, alright? Um, and then oh, there's obviously things like, uh, like Trick Room, uh, I'm pretty sure it gets reflecting light screen as well, but Trick Room, with this and a couple of other things in my draft, is going to be super scary. Um, but I'm just really happy to have a Remtis. Uh, unfortunately, the dragon I wanted got sniped off me a few rounds later. The dragon isn't really a defensive dragon this time, Latios can obviously double up as defensive or offensive. Um, the dragon I've picked probably isn't, you know, the best for a defensive core, but it's one I really want to try out. But I do have a Steel Fairy core, at least, um, at this point. And that works out really nice for me, to be honest. Um, because Aromatis is just so bulky. It, it's fantastic. Um, and I'm really looking forward to using it again this season. So, this was my round 3 pick. So far, I've got Meg Gallade round 1, Skarmory round 2, Aromatis round 3. Round 4, uh, I only had to wait for more picks. Uh, didn't get sniped, which is fantastic, and everyone was taking really offensive high tier threats at this point. And there's still going to be loads of high tier threats left when I want to pick my attackers, but no one's taking bulky walls or anything yet, so I'm like, right, I'm just going to sort out my defensive core now while I can, and then I'm going to go for the offense I want. So at this point, the only snipe I've had um, is Flawless, but I got a, I'm going to say like for like. They're not obviously the same, but they are similar in a Romatisse. 
So, comes back to me, and I have been waiting for this day for three whole seasons to get this mon. The one and the only Don Fan is finally on Norris Skitty's team with the Don Fanatic. So, I really wanted this thing mainly because one, Don Fan's cool. Who who doesn't like Don Fan? Um, two, its physical bulk will work quite well with a Roman Tease if I don't want to bring Skarmory. Where is Don Fan? It's 200 fate two, I think. Is it? I'm using a real, like a ballpoint pen. This isn't really good. There it is. Um, I wanted Don Fan 1 because it's an alternative rocker. 2 because it's a rapid spinner. So I now have rapid spin and defog reliable users of these moves drafted before pretty much anyone else does um, its defensive ability obviously it lacks the uh, recovery but I have wish passing fantastic Don Fan is bulky as hell but it's also offensive I mean 120 base attack Ice Shard, Seed Bomb, Play Rough, Earthquake, Stone Edge, Rock Polish this thing is nuts. I'm pretty sure it gets head smash as well. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Sturdy obviously allowing you to like get the weakness policy or you know the, the actual guaranteed rock polish. It's it's a really cool mod which I'm really looking forward to using this season and I've tried to make a draft that means I can bring it offensive if I want to. Um, obviously there will be a lot of usage of defensive Dumpan as well because that is what you know it, it probably does best but obviously it's offensive prowess is still nuts um, and I finally got it for the team finally I've wanted to use this for a while I wanted it last season but it got sniped because you know it's quite a good Pokemon it normally gets taken around because it's one of the most reliable spinners I'd say out there um, one thing it does do well as well I've already mentioned it with Romatisse it actually pairs up with Skarmory okay you know take on Skarmory's fire weakness okay it's immune to the electric weakness um, and Skarmory can take on the ice uh, problem and I'd say take on ice and water problem that well it takes on grass well um, it can deal with the water and ice problem that Donphan might have so I've got two hazard setters two hazard removers I've got some priority in the team I've got some offense I've got well mostly physical at the moment and uh, special some special offense so the draft is looking good so far now at this point Point after sort of my team, so I've got my Gallade, Skarmory, Remetis, and Donphan. Obviously, it's quite fat, um, and it's not very quick at this point, other than Mega Gallade. So I'm thinking, right, um, I need to get something fast and offensive. Now, originally, I was going to go for Shaman to complete a kind of core, um, but I spoke to Kyle about it because I didn't. He didn't tell me what to do. I was like, I really want Shaman because it work really nice with a lot of things I want. But it leaves me really exposed to ice and fire type moves. So we came to an agreement that we would try and get Talonflame. Because I have the hazard removal. Um, and Talonflame is out. As well as is capable of going bulky. Um, Priority Roost as well is very nice. Um, unfortunately, Sam picked that up. So I guess that's revenge for the Skarmory. But... Um, because Slide took Victini as his round one pick um, this season, I was very confident for once he wasn't going to pick his favourite uh, fire dog, uh, and that is Arcanine, and now I've got to find it on the Pokédex, but my fifth round pick, and we're, everyone was amazed it lasted this long because it's such a, a good mon and useful mon. I got Arcanine, uh, round five. <laughs> um, I'm really looking forward to using this because he kind of completes my core, my defensive core. Um, obviously, he gets Morning Sun, he gets Intimidate, he's got Flash Fire, he gets Flare Blitz, Wild Charge, Crunch, Extreme Speed, Close Combat. He can go Special um, if you really want. I'm pretty sure he gets Dragon Pulse, that very important unstabbed Dragon coverage. Um, and Outrage, actually. So beware, guys, there will be some forfeiting going on. Um, so, you know, I mean, you do see him use defensively a lot but I really am a fan of offensive Arcanine and I'm really looking forward to having the chance to use this thing offensively uh, extreme speed was really nice you know I've got three Pokemon with priority now uh, extreme speed being plus two as well which is nice um, it, obviously you know, things like flare blitz it's, it's gonna hurt from this thing it's kind of like a I'd say weaker 
it is a slightly weaker Entei. Um, but um, obviously they do do their own things differently. But I'm really happy to have got Arcanine because it suits my defensive core well. And it also suits me offensively really well because I needed offense and I wanted one more thing that is defensive to complete the core. So Arcanine was like the perfect fit. Um, so I'm really glad that I managed to get that in the end. And to be honest, the picks I've had so far aren't super high profile, um, so their pricing is sort of decent, so I have got money to sort of play with around the end. Um, so, as it stands right now, I have Mega Gallade round 1, Skarmory round 2, Rome Chiefs round 3, Donphan round 4, Arcanine round 5. So at the moment, I'm looking um, pretty good. So that Arcanine pick was after I waited about 20 drafts um, to get back to me. And the Pokemon I wanted after, I mean, it was a real toss up between that uh, Arcanine and the next Pokemon I wanted. Um, I decided to go Arcanine because it probably suited the team more. If this next Pokemon, I mean, I really wanted it, um, if this next Pokemon I wanted uh, did get taken away, I would be able to replace it because no one had really picked anything of a similar typing yet. So, you guys are probably sick of the sight of me using this thing uh, now, but I'm going to be brutally honest with you guys. One, I can use this guy if I can find it. He was just there. Where is he? There he is. One, I'm pretty good with this guy. He's got 20 kills for me in over two seasons. Or over 20 kills, sorry, in two seasons of the PPL. And that is Heliolisk. Vimto is back for season three. The chat was like, why have you got this again? Why are we letting him draft this again? And I was like, you're all idiots. Because this guy is... I love this guy, his move pool is literally perfect to the point where you can hit literally anything neutrally. Um, and his speed is 109, it's an awkward speed for people to deal with, obviously I can't keep up with the 110s, however I have my mech Gallade obviously. Um, so I've got some speed now in the team alongside mech Gallade, um, but I've also got the first part of the Volt Turn core which I decided I would like, obviously momentum is really, really important in league format. And having something like Heliolisk, which can pretty much reliably Volt Switch, because Ground types are scared to switch in on this thing. Ground doesn't resist normal, you can hide voice. Heliolisk always also, for some odd reason, gets Surf um, and Grass Knot. So, and hidden, hidden Power Ice. Um, it doesn't get HP Grass. That That's a joke, that's a joke, that's an in-joke, it wasn't really funny, but, but never mind. Um, we've got Heliolisk again, Vimto is back. You all know what Vimto does by now if you've been watching my battles over the last two seasons. Um, I used it season two, fell in love, um, sniped it from Shroom last season because he wanted to try out, and no one had picked any electric types up apart from Zapdos, I don't think at this point, or, or a Thunderous, you know, the, the standard electric types that go pretty quick. Um, Zapdos I did consider, but I was like, mm, if, if I have Skarmory, I don't really need Arcanine. They could work, but... I can't turn down my boy, uh, Heliolisk, can I? So, Heliolisk Vimto is back again, um, starting to make my team look a bit more threatening offensively. We've got Heliolisk, maybe Arcanine, and Mega Gallade so far for the offense. Um, so that was round six. We all know what Heliolisk does, so I don't think I need to go over it too much more. Now, the um, next pick is my dragon. And I wanted Haxorus. Sam, again, picks up the Haxorus. And I'm sitting here twiddling my thumbs like there's only one dragon left that's really any good. Um, I don't know if actually saying that, I don't know if Gudra had gone, but Gudra is in someone's team. Um, and I heavily considered Gudra um, to go alongside Shaman, uh, but then I was just like, no, ice weakness is too much at this point. So I was thinking, I'm going to have to take Dragonite. I'm, I'm a big fan of Dragonite. I'm, I'm happy to use Dragonite. Um, but no one seems to have any success with it. <laughs> so I was like, right, this Dragonite, which is probably the one I'm going to lean to the most. And then I was like, oh wait, Zygarde's there. I could use Zygarde. I was like, mm, but do I want to use Zygarde? I don't really want to use Zygarde. I was like, I still need some speed. I have two things that are fast. Arcanine, which is sort of average speed, and then some slow things. So I was like, right, there's this thing left. There was also Flygon, and I was like, no, I don't, I don't want Flygon. I really don't want Flygon. Anything I pick at this race is just going to be ice because it's a dragon. Pretty sure Drodigan was for it at this point, but I settled on Noivern. Now, the reason I settled on Noivern 
One, because it gets U-turn. Two, because Draco Meteor, Hurricane, Boom Burst. What is your switch in? And, like, Heat Wave or Fire Blast and shit like that it gets. It's, or, I don't think it gets Fire Blast. Does it? It gets Flamethrower. You know, it gets coverage. It gets Draco Meteor. It's something I don't use much. I want to drop some fucking Dracos this season. That's what I want. That's what I really want. I'm also going to show Shroom how to hit Hurricane. Um, but I was like, you know, this, this thing probably doesn't hit the hardest. Uh, I think it's only base 97. But, you know, Draco Meteor and Hurricane with a life full of specs is pretty powerful. Um, I'm pretty... I, it must get some setup of some sort. I don't actually know. It sounds quite bad me saying that. It must get, like, Home Claws or Sword Stance or something. I'm pretty sure it, it might get Agility. I don't know. I mean, it's, like, base 123 speed or something already. So, ridiculously fast. I love this thing's design. And no one ever uses this thing. There's probably a reason. It's probably bad. But I really am looking forward to using Neuburn uh, this season. Um, I also thought, you know what? I need some special offense at this point. Arcanine can go special, but, you know, favors physical because it's move pool leans that way. Um, I have Aromatisse. Um, and Heliosk. Heliosk, Neuvern, Aromatis are my only special offense. To be fair, I've only picked seven months, so I only have four physical, but my next two are physical as well, because... Well, I'll tell you why. Um, but Neuvern was my seventh pick, you know, I was like, I want that dragon. Flying Spam is also very good, by the way. Mega Venusaur was drafted this season. Um, Mega Lopany wasn't. I was like, Mega, Mega Lopany's not here. So, it's probably the only thing I need Bird Spam for, you know. I think Conk was drafted as well. Plus, bird spam is just good in general. Lots of bulky grass types, like your, um, like Tangrowth and that. Uh, I don't think Shaman got drafted. No, Celebi did. We've got a rain team in the division this season. I see Neuvern enjoying its time in, uh, in that rain for sure. There's a Mega Pidgeot, so, you know, if we need a Hurricane War, I am all set for that. Um, so, yeah, I'm really looking forward to using Neuvern. It's actually probably the Mon. That and Mega Gallade are the ones I want to try the most, I think, or want to have success with anyway. So that was Neuvern, that was my seventh pick. So we've got Mega Gallade, Skarmory, Aromatisse, Domfan, Arcanine, Helios, and Neuvern so far. So I didn't mention this earlier on because we've now got to the point. I mean, my, I, my draft order, which I've drafted in, by the way, was changed um, quite heavily because a lot of my offensive threats were sniped. So I've already said Shaman, no, Shaman didn't get sniped. Talonflame got sniped. Um, the one I didn't mention was Greninja, and I really want a Greninja. I was like, yeah, I'm turning into Ash here, I've got Greninja, I'm annoyed, but let me draft Pikachu next. But no, I really wanted Greninja, I really wanted, um, the priority it gets, it gets, what, Shadow Sneak, Water Shurik, and Quick Attack. Um, it's, it's, it's Greninja. We don't obviously allow Protein, because Protein Greninja is just absolutely absurdly good. You know, its coverage is nuts. Skull, Dark Pulse, Gunk Shot, Ice Beam, Grass Knot. Did I say Grass Knot twice? I think I might have. Extra Sensory, Rock Slide, Water Shuriken, Hydro Pump. Uh, there's probably some more. I don't know if it gets Focus Blast, but I don't think it does. U-Turn, Toxic Spikes, Spikes. Everyone, I love Greninja. It's it is up there in my favorites with Staraptor and Mega Gallade. And I was really annoyed when Shroom took it. I was like, right, Shroom, you've taken Florges and you've taken Greninja for me. So I was like, right. There's Gyarados. Gyarados could be kind of cool. Um, and then I also looked and I was like, you know, Cresselia has been drafted. <laughs> there aren't many bulky psychic types around uh, this season. But knockoff spam is still prevalent because what switches into a powerful knockoff? Now I was looking through and I was like, I really want Greninja. I know it didn't get knockoff. Oh my god, this guy's still around. So at this point, I'm looking. I'm, I'm thinking, yes, this is the one. Um, and I'm really looking forward to using it. I mean, I said that about everything so far. I think um, you're not going to be that low down. Uh, da -da, where are you? No, I think I've gone too far. No, I haven't. There it is. I saw its name. Where'd it go? There it is. Round number eight pick, Crawdaunt. Now, you know I said I had some slow things. I have Trick Room. Potential. Look no further than this thing. Swords Dance. Dragon Dance. Also slow enough to benefit from things like Trick Room. 
Not to mention adaptability, cr uh, crunch, adaptability, knockoff, and adaptability, crab hammer, adaptability, skull, adaptability, dark pulse, because this thing can go either way. Now, its move pool isn't that fantastic, sort of, coverage wise. It's good enough. It's a dark type, you're going to get fairy switching in. Knockoff is still going to decent, do a decent amount of damage, it's going to lose its item. This thing gets poison jab. I think, no, it doesn't get poison jab. Does it get poison jab? I can't remember. It gets sludge bomb. That, that I do know. So, it gets poison coverage for things like fairies. However, if it's a fairy like Florges coming in, Florges is not going to appreciate a uh, crab hammer. That's, that's just for, for sure. So, it doesn't really matter too much in that sense, I guess. Um, he also gets superpower. Uh, he gets ice beam. Um, I'm not actually sure what else he does get, to be honest. Aqua Jet. Aqua Jet is a big one. Adaptability Aqua Jet will be lovely, especially with things floating around like Victini. Um, well, that's probably the main one actually. <laughs> I can't think of what other fire types were drafted. There was, there was, there was some. That, that's what I can say. There, there was some. Um, but I'm really looking forward to using this thing. Having played in the NPCC this season, where I had zero knockoff switch ins. Zero dark type switch ins. Dark type is a very good offensive type. There is literally fairy and dark to resist it, I think, because steel's nerf. I think. Don't quote me on that. Dark offensively is a very good typing. It doesn't hit a lot of things super effective, but it hits a lot of things hard. Um, and then obviously I do get Aqua Jet to clean up, or you know, I can go Dragon Dance if I want. Crawdon is going to be really cool. Um, obviously, it's the dark water typing that Greninja has, but I really wanted Greninja. But I'm also very excited to track Crawdon because, you know, adaptability. Last season, I had Darmanitan, Nidoking. No switch ins. There literally isn't a switch in to any of them. I mean, there are, there's limited switch ins in League format anyway. Crawdon, I don't know if it's on quite the same level, but it's something there that has limited switch ins. Um, it's. Physically, defensive, it's okay. Especially defensively, not so good. Um, I think it's something that's probably going to be better in certain circumstances rather than a mon I could bring every week and just kind of spam. Um, but I am looking forward to trying to use it because it can just take team down, team, team, the teams down itself. So that's really, really cool. So that was round eight. And I have, I think, 11 million pounds left at this point. And we have 110, as odd as it sounds, it used to be 100, but because the prices have changed so much, generally increased, because obviously we've found out what's good in this format, what isn't the soft fourth season now. Um, we know what's good and what isn't. So I have 11 million pounds left, and I'm like, right. Looking at my team, I really struggle with fairies outside of Skarmory and Poison Jab on Mega Gallade. Um, I don't know if Arcanine gets Iron Head. I, I don't think it does, does it? I'm not sure. Um, and crawled on Sludge Bomb. That's not enough for fairies. And, you know, I don't think any one Mon I draft is going to be enough for fairies. But I'm like, hey, I've got to at least try and get something that can deal with fairies. So, y you've also seen a recurring theme that I have a lot of priority on this team. I've got four Mons out of eight that have priority. We ain't slowing down, boys. We are not slowing down on the priority front here. Our last Pokemon from the team. Oh, and by the way, the the only Mons that I really wanted now were Poison types or Steel types, purely for Fairies. That was it. And whatever I, way I went, I would get duplicate typings. As in, like I already had um, a Dark type because I was looking at Drapion. I was looking at Toxicroak, um, and obviously that's Fighting. And I was like, okay, I don't want too many of the same types. I like to try and have as many different types as possible because obviously type matchup is huge in league format. So in the end I was looking I was like right I know I have one of each of these types but I've used this guy in league in the NPCC and he's a lot of fun. I mean I haven't really done that well with him but I really like him. Excuse me. I was uh, up late last night. Uh, I, I just love his design. I've loved this thing since you know it's been been around. Um, it's got priority, it hits like a truck, it can go mixed, it can go special, it can go physical. Its move pool is fantastic, it again gets agility and rock polish, so more setup chances. I think you already know who I'm on about. I'm, I'm on about Metagross. Metagross is the last thing uh, picked for the team this season. As I've said, to try and deal with fairies. It's got a 
stupidly good attack, like 135, stupidly good defense as well, uh, 130. Its speed is what, 70? I want to say, obviously Mega Metagross trumps normal Metagross all day, every day. Um, but obviously it, it does get the priority bullet punch. Um, it got like 90 special attack and 90 special defense. It's bulky, I mean I don't know what its HP stat is, but it's enough. To the point where you can run it bulkily if you want. However, it has got enough, you know, special attack. Um, to be especially offensive to catch people off guard. It's just a Pokemon I really like. Um, another Stealth Rock option as well, if I want to. I mean, I've got Donphan and Skarmory for that. They're probably the most reliable ones. But, you know, three Stealth Rock opportunities in a squad out of nine is pretty good. Um, it makes it a bit harder for your opponent to prepare for. Um, but like I said, this thing's coverage mainly there is the fairy killer. Pretty much every fairy is gone. Uh, Clefable, Sylveon, Florgis, Togekiss, uh, Azumarill, all gone. All things that Metagross chose. Yep, yummy, bring it on. Um, to all of them things, really. Um, so, I'm really looking forward to taking out some fairies this season. It was, it was crucial that I got Metagross. And if it wasn't Metagross, it's going to have to be something like uh, I think it would have been Toxicroak. And while I love Toxicroak, I have a lot more faith in Metagross doing stuff. The other, and the other reason I think I would have gone for Toxicroak over Metagross is Nasty Plot. Because I did need some more special offense. But this thing has got slightly higher special offense already. So, you know, something's got from the bat. But I actually already sl I've slept on it a bit. But Crawdon's still got 95 special attack. Um, with adaptability, Scald, Dark Pulse, ow. Ice Beam for coverage, still gonna hurt like a bitch. So yeah, that was the Norwich Skitty Squad for Season 4 of uh, PPL. Um, personally, I'm still a bit unsure about the actual draft itself, mainly because there's quite a lot of things here that I have not used before. Um, obviously in League you want to try new things out, but the familiarity of Skarmory, Aromatis and Heliosk will be cool. My only concern at the moment is, uh, I mean, I don't think Dimanitan got drafted, I think Entei did? Um, Victini did? I mean, I've got Arcanine, actually. Um, no, I don't know what I'm talking about now. Um, I think the team overall is pretty solid. I've got the defense I needed, um, I've got the hazard removal I needed, I've got the priority needed, I've got a mixture of speeds that I wanted, I've got a mixture of new faces and old faces. Um, I've got a mix of setup potential. I've got a mix of hard hitting raw power. I think the team itself is really balanced. Um, and I'd say it's pretty well, you know, put together considering our drafting system. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. I'm still scared that fairies might be able to rule me a bit. Especially when I have threats like Crawdorn, Noivern, and Mega Gallade, all weak to fairy. Um, I obviously do then have Metagross and Arcanine and Skarmory on the flip side you can deal with me so it's interesting we'll see um, the most annoying thing though however is the fact that week one oh I was a lucky boy I am playing George Setar MC week one of the PPL I'm just like this is fantastic not um, I can't remember what he drafted it was it was Al here's, here's Mega Sableye um, Pretty sure he has like one of the Latties or something stupid. It's it's not fun. Kyron Black didn't get drafted though. That's not too bad, I guess. Um, I, I could probably deal with that, but but you know, it, it's a thing that didn't get drafted. Um, so yeah, that was my draft analysis: Meg Gallet, Skarmory, Aromatis, Donphan, Arcanine, Heliolisk, Noivern, Crawdon, and Metagross. Hopefully, you guys uh, do like the team. Leave me some comments. Obviously, let me know what you think. Uh, I'm always interested. I said I was going to keep this short, but it's 40 minutes, so sorry if you have remained and listened to me ramble for this long. Um, hopefully you did. But like I said, leave me some comments, leave me some feedback. If you've got any ideas for Mabel, like maybe some transfers going into the season. Transfer window workings have changed a bit. We get full money back, so we're quite flexible with what we can drop and get again. Um, so if you see some glaring holes in the team, let me know because I will look to fix them. Obviously, well, not straight away because I need to practice. I might like, I might be able to just win with this team that I have right now. I mean, uh, uh, Shardy will pop up in the comments saying, "Jack, you can't win anything." Ha 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 ha! Shardy, I will fucking beat you, man. 
<laughs> anyway, uh, that's me for now. Uh, I've been rambling for like the last few minutes anyway. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Make sure you leave a like and comment if you did. And I will see you for maybe a team builder? I don't know. It depends when I battle George. Um, but week one will be uploaded. Uh, let me check the dates correctly. I think it's the, yeah, it's the 8th of August. So you have got that to look forward to. So thanks again, guys, and I'll see you later. Bye.